Illegal elbow. Elbow techniques. This is the elbow. An elbow from here. I'll throw the elbow. Yeah, the illegal elbow. Welcome back, just like that! Hey, welcome to Illegal Elbow MMA and more. This is Brian from LegalElbow.com and Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And this is Dan from MMA Aftermath on Facebook and Twitter. Oh yeah, we're back, people. Had to crack a freshie there. Icy um, cold ones, baby. Icy cold ones. Yeah, I got the I got the Miller Light over here, man. What are you What are you rocking? You guessed it, brother. A Miller Light, baby. Well, yeah, that's. I think that's the official uh, official beer of this show. But uh, hey, man, because Bud Light won't pay me anything, so you know. we got a uh, infusion. <laughs> Sorry. We got an infusion a- of, of youth talent. It looks like here. <laughs> Because uh, we just watched, uh, his name is uh, Sage Northcutt. We watched him on a legacy fight against a guy who, yeah, it's he's very suspect. Brian will go into his record in a minute here. But uh, this sweet, guy coming out. Sweet performance. Dude. Comes out with a nice kick, man. Knocks the guy back. The guy comes at him, does a push kick, knocks him back a little. And then does another push kick and almost knocks the guy right the fuck over. And then takes this guy to the ground and, uh, you know, works some ground and pound, works some jujitsu, and finally uh, chokes him out. He looked very good in this fight. Only 19 years old. UFC signed him. But there might be a little questions. They're going to need to groom him and not bring him up too quick, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you mentioned, you know, his accolades with karate, how good he looks with karate and stuff like that. And it's like, karate champ. Yeah, and then you see him go down to the ground, and you know throughout the whole fight, really, you know, because we go into the, we go into round two, and then you see him score a neck uh, neck rank submission. For and this like fight. you said, what you camp know? is he out of? And that and that showed what camp he was out of. Which is uh, 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 Gracie Barrow Katie, which yep. I don't know a whole lot about. You know, all it all it has to say is Gracie for me. It's like, well, then you know, you know, but Gracie Barrow Katie, I, I, you know. That's pretty good, though, man. Coming already in, being a karate champion, and then excelling that you know against a lackluster guy, which you'll run down his record, but showing some damn good jits, man. Right, but a vet though too. I mean, really a vet. Yeah. You know, who he, Rocky Long is the guy he faced, and he really kind of looked really good the entire time, being five and zero, oh. five and zero. Oh. Okay, people, let's take a look at this. Rocky Long. You know, I'm talking about uh, Sage Northcutt. We're not talking about any real huge names that he's faced. You know what I mean? But he's getting his way into UFC as 5-0 and fighter. We've seen it a dozen times. You know what I mean? We've we've seen it with a lot of guys. You know, all the way from a Brian Stan to a Chris Weidman. You know, all kinds of guys. You know, which, mind you, Chris Weidman, man, look at that fucking guy. Shit, holy shit. So, but um, the guy that he just beat, a, th- a 37-year-old. 21 wins, 33 losses. So, which we talked about a little bit, Dan, before getting back to things. Uh, we talked about, you know, well, shit, you're talking about a guy that's lost 33 times. But at the same time, it's like, this guy's very seasoned. Not that he's been in there with, like, these amazing guys, you know what I mean? It's, you know, you look down his resume, he's been in there since 2001, you know? And if we go all the way through his whole resume, it's not like he's been in there with these amazing you know, which I, like I said, people know me, I hate that friggin' word, but, but he's been fighting a very lower tier promotions. We've, we've, we've heard of none of the guys he's fought. And, um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to take, I'm not trying to sit here and take away all kinds of crap about him, but he's 21 and 33. He's a very seasoned guy, big time, 37 years old, 21, 33. This guy fought him at five and zero. Oh. And his amateur fight, he's six amateur fights. So in total, he's 10 and 1, if you want to consider his amateur fights. We're talking submissions, TKOs. This, whatever this guy had with karate, 
he pretty much said, you know what, goodbye to, Capra- goodbye to karate. I'm adopting the submission game as well. And he fully did because this guy's, you know, in his pro career, we're talking the three TKOs, two submissions. In his, uh, um, excuse me, amateur career, we're talking uh, two TKOs, three submissions, one decision. So this guy's decision one time through his amateur and professional career. The rest of my decisions and take a guy to a, a, a guy to look out for, man. Yeah, he's only five and zero, oh, but he, he people must have been fighting he, when he's like sixteen. Yeah, he's only he's only nineteen years old, and that's badass because the guy looks awesome. But his last fight was one hundred sixty five pounds. So him coming to UFC is he going to fight one seventy, or is he going to fight one one fifty five? I would say go up to 170 and bulk up a little bit, man. The guy has he's got some stature to him, man. You know he's he's a fucking tall motherfucker. So uh, I'd put on some muscle and go up. He's six foot, right on the mark, man. So that's a tall yeah. dude, man. Going into 170, it, it could be nice because you got some uh, some five nine, five ten guys in there that are that are thick, you know. And he's a guy that's real trim and limber, and you know what I mean. He might go in there not wasting a lot of shots like we've seen a lot of these guys, man, when they're real, real built up and stocky, they're wasting shots and they, they got to feed them muscles. So they're, they're, they're tired going into the second. This guy might, might make sure. I'm in as a speed, like that. speedster, you know, and that's just like the fight that we just saw, dude. Yeah. He was a fucking train coming through and so they're just like, I'm going to run at you. <laughs> Push Ooh. kick in the gut, man. Like three big kicks in the gut. Yeah. And he finished that he finished that fight up in the second man. It was it was top notch. Look around for a Sage North cut for this guy. Look for his uh, his second round finish to this guy. You know, choke out. He sees something in him. So yeah, and and the guys. Um, what was it? Uh, damn it, the announcers. Sorry, man. Um, one of them's a huge dude. Uh, shit, he's got a uh, he's got his own gym. I can't think of the guy's name. Um. He was an early UFC guy. Shit. Like a Militich? Militich, yeah. Militich was talking about this guy's accolades as the guy was fighting. And it's like, he was making some really good points. He was making some great points on what this kid's bringing at 19 years old. It's like, shit, man. So, yeah, Militich was really pointing out some great things that this kid was doing. Yeah, I've always enjoyed listening to Militich uh, comedy. Or, you know, especially the, the his best commentation was uh my anus fight you know it was yeah it was yeah very, it was an award-winning um him and uh, michael Chavello, man there damn. is a cut on my anus yeah, <laughs> yeah. damn <laughs> and then uh um Militich comes back with uh my anus is bleeding all over. Yeah, Chavez. my anus. Yeah, my anus is bleeding all over Chavez, Chavez's chest. <laughs> just, I just Google it, somebody. Just Google it, man. It's hilarious. It is classic. It, it is hilarious, man. It, it, needs to, uh, it might bring it back on a throwback Thursday and just plaster it everywhere. Send me it, man. I'll put it up on uh, on the the web page, man, for it needs sure. To make a comeback. That's but... funny shit, man. But uh, moving on in news, uh, before we touch, you know, do a little light touch on some of the, like, three fights that we're really looking forward to the UFC, coming up uh, UFC 191 card. Like I said, we're going to be doing a, a YouTube video, probably chilling out by the patio, weather permitting. Um, Hell yeah. It's doing a fun, little three fight show. Ball. But we have a question to ask here. It's a little, you know. You guys can weigh in on it, comment if you guys want. You know, who is going to stay undefeated? You know, actually, who is going to lose first out of this undefeated list? We got a Ronda Rousey coming in at twelve and zero. We got a Chris Weidman coming in at thirteen and zero. We got a Khabib Nurmagomedov coming in at twenty two and zero. We got a uh, Joanna Jajacek. Yeah, well, I, thought, <laughs> I, I thought you were going to do your Jajacek. <laughs> yes, there you go. She's Sorry. ten and zero. We got a yeah. Thomas Almeida coming in at twenty out, ten uh, twenty and zero. Henry Love Cejudo, that guy, man. Cejudo, shit. yep. A Henry Cejudo coming in at nine and zero. Holly Holm nine and zero, and uh, Al Sterling. Yeah, Aljamain Sterling, man, hell yeah. 
come in at 11 or no? So personally, I think a Holly Holmes is going to be the first one to suffer uh, her first loss in this little list. Because like we said, people got Rousey, Weidman, uh, Nurmagomedov, Jacek, Almeida, Cejudo, Holm, and Sterling. That's I see Holm losing. I see Holm losing before I see a uh, uh, Nurmagomedov yeah. for sure. Nurmagomedov's a fucking monster right now, and he is. Uh, but it's in, he's he in limbo. Been in a little while though. Yeah, he's, he's in limbo, and it's yeah. been, it's going on two years. So. Yeah. Let's. What's up, too, man? He's Questions great. He's there. a great Twitter guy, you know, but we haven't seen him fight. But he, when he was in there, though, he looked good, man. I can't. I can't take that away from him. Twenty-two and zero. Yep. Good. Yeah. Fucking. Jeez, man. Ridiculous. And people want to, you know, argue in the comment section that this was posted in a uh, Cage Fighter by uh, Mark Rag. Um, you can argue a John Jones, you know. Because of his uh, north-south elbows against uh, wow, the deaf wrestler fighter. Oh, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. He retired, but... Um, yeah, he retired and came back, too. Yeah. But, uh, Mark... Mark... Uh, Mark Hamill. Matt Hamill. Excuse yep. me. Here yep. we go. Matt, Matt Hamill. You know, it's... And that brings us back where we were talking about previously with the traps. <laughs> going to see some things and overlook them and then see other things and call them on it you know but you know that aside he could come into this 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 um list but you know we, who knows when the fuck he's coming back so right yeah well, it's uh, not even yeah. I, I say take him off this list because he's not even an active fighter right now you know what i mean really but in i'm all, in agreement with fairness you. yeah i'm in agreement with you at the holly home losing to a ronda rousey in november because none yeah, of, at the I same time, though, beforehand, beforehand, we could Joanna have somebody comes, else lose. Yeah. We could have somebody else lose, though, you know, beforehand. Because I think Johanna not... fights before that. So, yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure, man. I, you know, I'm not, without even looking into when she's fighting next. Because I don't think Gedalia is going to beat her. But, you know, I mean, I think it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a lot better than the first time around. But, uh, you know. There's a whole other gamut of fighters you talked about on that list, yep. you know. But you know what? Even better people, MMA Aftermath on Twitter, Illegal Elbow on Twitter. You guys give us your thoughts on those answers. Yeah. You tell us what you guys think. Who, who's gonna Who's gonna be the first one to lose? We first got home. To... What's that? Well, I said we got home. Holly home. Yeah. First. Yeah. I mean, there could be somebody first though, man. Who knows? You know, you could you could post it on the uh, Legal Oval fan page on Twitter, you know, or you could or on, excuse me on Facebook. We got our brand new page. We I just made it like a week and a half ago, if that. So go if you're if you don't know about it yet, now you do. So go over there. It's not a Legal Oval MMA the group. It's it's a totally different page. So go over there, check it out, like it. You know, that's what we're looking for is likes, people getting to know the page. And uh, tell us what you think about the uh, the whole uh, who's going to lose first, man. All these undefeated fighters, man. UFC's bringing a lot more, too, like this kid that we just talked about. He's another undefeated fighter, man. He's coming in, and, you know, who knows? With the way UFC's doing things, this kid might be might meet his first loss. So the way, say, the way UFC is doing things, he might get a fucking championship fucking uh, fight, you know, or he, they might fight in might, or. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It, it's one way or the other, man. It's like either bring somebody in against a, a turd bowl, you know, kick around a turd bowl around the yard a little bit or or completely bring him in against the best there ever is. So that's, yeah, it's basically what we're looking at. But <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm really uh, not, to, you know, just to touch on this a little bit before we get into the UFC 190. Before you, before you do that, though, I just want to say something for uh, our boy uh, James Forte. No. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I got that tweet today, so little I had to Chun-Li. throw it out there, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it again? Little Chun Li from Street Fighter 2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's about it. That's about it, too, man. That's what it sounds like. I never even tried to do it, but, yeah, that's kind of what it sounds like. But, no, it's 
you know, he sent that tag to that tag to us, but but he he added uh, Holly Holm to it. So it's like shit. And now I kind of feel like a dickhead. But at the same time, it's like you know, hey, we give our we give our honest opinion of the fight. We're not we're not bagging on Holmes, man. We're, we're, you know, Holly Holm. We like Holly Holm, but it's like at the same time, it's like UFC's throwing her into the dirt, throwing her into the deep end. I don't know why they're doing that. In my opinion, they're ruining careers with doing shit like this. So and we've mentioned on the last show, the show that I'm talking about. But I, I derailed, man. Sorry about that, dude. No, before we get into the watch call, I just wanted to touch on, you know, it's on the uh, Barnett uh, Nelson card. Fight night card uh, is the Musasi versus Uriah Hall fight. You know, Musasi coming in at thirty-seven and five and two, and a Uriah Hall coming in at twelve and five. Uh, I, this to me, Uriah Hall, yeah, he beat uh, a Bamboozy, you know, who is unproven. He's still a newbie and. In USC, yeah. you know, it's five and zero oh coming into yeah. this. That dude was five and zero. Oh. It's like, but he, he was also in the RFC or RFA, you know. Right. You it's know. like, well, he's still he's faced nobody. I mean, really, it's. Yep. And and Uriah Hall, this is basically going to show us is Uriah Hall the real fucking deal? Because Gagar Masasi, in our eyes, is the real fucking deal. Gagar Masasi. Uh, sitting here ranked right now at sixth, uh, ranked sixth overall in the middleweight division. He's got he's got all the fucking talent in the world, man. This guy is fucking proven, in my opinion, a fucking legend. Yeah, he's had his problems against the fucking Jacare, uh, Loyola Machida, which we've talked about. If he were to fight again, I would give the fight to a, a Gagar Masasi. But he beat Acasas Philippou, a Dan Henderson, you know, with relative ease, uh, first Jeff round made KO. A mark. Just yeah. desecrated a Mark Munoz. Yeah. I mean, and just the names mismatch. alone, you know, the names alone that he has fought and beat or even lost to, but the 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 pedigree of fighters he has gone against just outweighs Uriah Hall second to none, but. Like I said, Uriah, this is this is proving grounds, man. Uriah Hall, yeah. man, fuck, man, you beat a you beat a Gagar Masasi, and you're gonna have me in your corner saying, "Fuck Uriah Hall, man, beat one of the greats." And I mean, Uriah Hall right now in UFC, which he's got a lot more fights. Well, a couple more. Let's let's look at it this way. He Uriah Hall is four and three in UFC. Uh, Gagar Masasi, on the other hand, is four and two. So I would believe they're looking at that as a whole, which is fucking silly because the level of difference, the difference of levels is what I should say. The difference of competition, you know, we're talking Dan Henderson, you know, uh, uh, Souza, you know, Jacare Souza. Jacare Souza would laugh in the ear of Uriah Hall while he fucks him in the ass. I mean, I'm sorry. Was that out loud? Sorry, what? <laughs> Sorry about that, people. But um, Leona Machida, you think Leona Machida is going to have a real hard time with Uriah Hall? I mean, with the experience difference, I just don't see it. But you know what? There's some times where I got to look at it where Gagar Masasi. There's some times where I see it to where he's not fighting to his full full potential. But then when I take a look at another look at his resume, it's like. The only time I don't see him fighting to his full potential is against top three guys. You know, we're talking Mark Munoz, Dan Dan Henderson, Costas Philippou, Alir Latifi, Mike Kyle. You know, we've already gone back into strike force with those wins. So it's just a matter of what they're making Gagar Masasi prove himself against a lesser fighter is what they're basically doing. And they're giving Uriah Hall, which I think Uriah Hall called out. Uriah Hall... I, said, hey, I want this fight. Because I think the the, the original uh, uh, fight for Gagard was uh, obviously somebody else, but I think when he got injured, Uriah Hall said, yeah, let me have that fight. And then that's great, but you're going against somebody that's so seasoned. You might be able to see everything you're bringing, dude. So you better bring your top game, train the best you've ever trained, and um, 
plan on losing. But, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, really, is Gagar Masasi going to come in here and think, well, you know, whatever, man, I just this is just a uh, fluffy fight, you know, it's whatever. This is a newbie guy, whatever. Is he going to take him lightly? What do you, th- Dan? If I was going to ask you a question, do you think Gagar Masasi is going to come <clears throat> in here and take your eye all light? Lightly. Oh, fuck no. I think Gagarin Masasi, yeah, it looks like he takes him lightly during the fight. That's just because of his demeanor. You know, Gagarin Masasi just always looks like he's about to go half asleep during a fight because he just, he doesn't get worked up. He's always the same Gagarin Masasi. Calm, cool, collective. Game face. Game face. You're not going to see him fucking showing emotions. He might flap his arms up once in a while and ask you, come on, you know, Okay, let's go. You know, he's done that before, but it's yeah. nothing too, you know, drastic or anything like that. Game face, like you said, fucking going in at it, professional, fucking tactician. Your right hall better watch out because if you get right hall gets wrapped up on the ground, it's going to be oh, night night time. Okay? Fucking over, man. It it's is gonna over. Be night night time. Uh, you can ask Mark Munoz about that. Okay. If if you have any hall... questions. Yeah, 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 absolutely. If you got any questions, yeah, yeah. I mean, if your Ryan Hall goes anywhere near the ground with a Garbasasi, it's 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 complete control time, and complete domination time. A matter of time. <laughs> well, what? Yeah, a matter of time. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like this is a really cool card because this is in Japan. So this is your Ryan Hall shot to make a huge name in Japan because we know going back to Pride. Japan fans are huge. And that's why Gagar Masasi's on this card. Yeah. Because and that's why Japan. Josh Barnett's on this card. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean that it's it's a giant card for when it comes to a uh, a Japan uh, Japanese crowd. This is kind of like a, a a mini coming home pride card here. <laughs> it really is. You know. You know, Rye Hall, you're, obviously Rye Hall's a newbie, but he can make a huge shit ton of fans even in losing of this card. So, it's a good shot. I would say it's a good call for Uriah Hall, but he better make it a good fight. Because if he just gets his ass handed to him, then Japan, Japanese fans aren't going to be... They're going to be like, ah, yeah. I'm always down for any fights in him. Japan, man. I'm always down for the fights in Japan. Yeah, they're absolutely, man. But they're, if he brings a shit fight and just gets his ass handed to him, they're not going to remember him. No. Yeah, no. This is... Big time stuff for Uriah Hall. This is just should be, should be you know second rate. You know, yeah, just go in there and fucking do what I do for Gagar Masasi. But at the same time, Gagar Masasi cannot overlook this guy. This guy has everything to gain. Gagar Masasi has nothing to gain with this fight because this should be a fight that he should win easily. So he needs to pay attention to that, in my opinion. So. Oh yeah. Moving on to the uh, UFC uh, 191 card. Um, we were talking about this guy after his fight uh, with uh, with Edson Barbosa. And he was a little down in the dumps about his performance. Because in his performance against Edson Barbosa, he started out strong. But Edson Barbosa just he worked him over with the Edson Barbosa style. Switch kick! The switch kick! The switch kick, as Joe Rogan would say. Um, <laughs> right, all night. Yeah, yeah, all night long, switch kick. Uh, Edson Barbosa outworked him. And at the end of the, the night, like Brian was saying when we uh, ran down the uh, aftermath of it, Paul Felder said, I'm not, next time you see me fight, I'm not taking my fucking foot off the gas. You're going to see no. a different Paul Felder. So that being said, going against the Ross Pearson, Night with a 19 and nine record, Ross Pearson to me is in limbo, dude. You know, it's it's win loss, win loss, win loss for a Ross Pearson. You know, you know a loss against Diego Sanchez, a win against the Gray Maynard, a loss against the Ally Quinta, which opened our eyes on that fight uh, about an Ally Quinta, mind you. But then uh, a win against the Sam Stout, a loss against the Evan Evan Dunham. So right now, Ross Pearson. It's put up or shut up time, you know. And yeah, it's, it's a huge question, yeah. yeah. And a Paul really Felder, is. let's see if he's going to do the foot off. He's not going to take the foot off the gas. Ross Pierce is the perfect guy to go against for, for when it comes to that because 
Ross Pearson is a bruiser. Hey, just this is gonna hey, be a straight up brawl. It it's gonna be a nasty ass brawl. This could be people, pay attention, man. This could be brawl of the night, fight of the night. This could be fight of the night very well, easily. Ross Pearson's got two of them. He's got one performance of the night, two fights in the night, and uh Paul Felder's got one fight of the night. Or one performance in the night, one fight in the night, which is probably the same fucking thing, but you know, hey, these guys are fucking you're probably not going to see any ground game in this, just so you guys know. You know, and that's the thing, too. Paul Felder's only loss was to Edson Barboza. So with that being said, it's like, well, there's a little bit of difference in competition here. So if we look at a Paul Felder, he's 10-1. and one. You know, he just lost to Edson Barboza. Uh, beat a Danny Castillo. Beat a Justin Sago. And then before... The, Excuse me, before that was all, you know, whatever it was, Cage Cage Fury Fighting Championships. And and Felders looked awesome. I mean, watching this dude fight, I was like, holy shit, this dude's really, you know, his win over Danny Castillo was just sick, in my opinion. You know, and, and the uh, Jason Sago fight, I, I don't remember right directly offhand, but this dude's a fun guy to watch. But I think when he got in there with Ed, Edson Barboza, it was a little more than he was used to. But he's been in there and he's learned it now. So coming here with a Ross Pearson, I think he'll, like he said, I'm not taking my foot off the gas pedal. Ross Pearson might be able to correct that dude a little bit and show him, hey, man, this is my game. This is my game and uh, you're entering my territory. And Ross Pearson's got just about double, you know, really just about more than double this guy has in fights. You know, and he's fought better competition. So this is a huge this is a huge fight for a Paul Paul Felder, a huge loss for a Ross Pearson if he if he if he loses. It's it's gigantic if he loses, man, for sure. Yeah. So I I'm, I'm excited honestly, I'm more excited to see a Paul Felder come back from a, a Barboza loss. Really I am, because it's like I've seen Ross Pearson come back, and it was like, eh, I'm not really sure what he's doing here. Um, I think there's some really some serious corrections he can do with his his striking technique. It's kind of like a run and gun kind of, you know, just go for the shoot from the hip and just, you know, well, well um, you know, it's kind of some questions to be answered with Ross Pearson's striking technique. Well, Paul Felder, he's taken up the mentality of a. Uh... A cowboy Cerrone, the guy that flies out to train with Paul Felder, because if you see Paul Felder against the Barbosi, he he had a lot of fucking mannerisms and techniques that I see in a cowboy, especially with the, his kicking game. Um, that there was means... a lot of confusion going on in, in Felder's corner too, though, man. Barbosa kind of kind of kind of confused him a little bit, yeah. in my opinion, man. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what he's going to have to realize. It's like, yeah, you can come out with a certain kind of game plan, but when your opponent changes up your game plan and it forces you into his type of fight, you have to have the adaptability to change it up. And that's kind of like a, a, a fucking cowboy Cerrone. You know, he went yeah. against a, a Diaz brother and got his fucking face busted in with a jab. If he were to fight him again, he'd probably change it up. But yeah. Paul Felder needs to learn how to change it up on the fly. But I do have to give him credit for being having the cowboy mindset about getting back into the octagon as soon as possible. He just got done fighting on July 25th. He's back there on September 5th. He's getting back in there, fucking just going at it. Big props. Was that see, two, though, like you said. Was this that barely is, two months in a week? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. that's damn quick, man. Damn yeah. quick. A Paul Felder coming back in here, trying to make a name for himself. Ross Peer, uh, Pearson coming in, trying to stay relevant. That's that's basically it, brother. <laughs> that's, that's it right there. And, and Pearson, I would say Pearson's got a little bit of the advantage. But Paul Felder, it's like whatever you're doing training right now, if you're training with a Cerrone, you need to really f- pay full attention to what Cerrone's telling you. Yep. Because Cerrone right now, Cerrone can, in my opinion, Cerrone cannot be in a better place than he is right now. It's, it's, I don't care about the title. I just want to fight. And when I go in there to fight, I have a really good time. And 
it's like nobody can take anything away from him. If they beat him, they still can't take anything away from him. Yeah. And, and, and Cerrone is the the epitome of a guy that has worked so fucking hard and gotten the shaft a lot. Of, he's kind of, in, in my opinion, he's in the the uh, Jacare Souza camp of getting shafted by the UFC on title contention because yeah, yeah. he they've both had to fight their way and sit there and muck around in the top 10 and fight this guy and fight everybody. And then finally, when it's co- uh, convenient for the UFC, the, uh, well, yeah, we can fit you guys in here for a title shot. You know, it's like this motherfucker, man, he fights four times a year. You know, six, seven right. fights in the last two years, you know. Well, he has been pretty vocal, though, about, you know, well, I don't care about Company fighting. Guy. Man. I just want to, I just, whatever they're going to, you know, set up for me, I just want to keep fighting, whatever. I just want to fight. The I love fight. fighting. And he says, you know, with uh, Helwani or whoever it is, you know, uh, I don't care about the damn title. The title doesn't mean shit. You know, Dana's always said, man, if, if you're not fighting for the championship, then I don't, I'm not really listening to you. It, it's he's come, said it a number of different ways. It's you know come I mean? to the point where, yeah, Cerrone's got, like, sponsorships from Budweiser. But I guarantee if Donald Cerrone wins the fucking title, they're going to be re- renegotiating the fucking Budweiser contract. You know, he's going to be, re- you know, the champ is going to be re- renegotiating and... Yeah, it's going to be a big win. ass yeah. contract, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So either it's going to be a, a like you said, ugly, <laughs> ugly contract negotiation there, where really you know, yeah. or the whole Reebok a, thing going on. It could be a very lucrative one, and like you said, he is sitting pretty right now, dude. He really is, man. He really is, and he's somebody to really latch. In terms of a Paul Felder, he's somebody to really latch onto right now and learn from yeah. because. Yeah. There's a shit ton of experience to be learned from, and Ross Pearson does Soak not it in like a sponge. Yeah. yeah, Ross Pearson, you know, a, a headhunter, a kick-ass striker, and just a bruiser and an ass kicker, still doesn't have that 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 finesse of a of a, a Cerrone game. Just doesn't have it yet, man. Really. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, another fight to look forward to. Uh, on this USC 191 card is an Anthony Rumble Johnson versus a Jimmy Manawa. And Rumble Johnson coming in at 19 and 5, Manawa 15 and 1. You know, Rumble ranked uh, current number one lightweight, uh, basically the fucking contendership here. Uh, and then uh, number seven, Jimmy Manawa. We'll see what's going to happen right here. We're going to run this down as soon as we get back from this break. We'll be back, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing? You enjoying the show? Yeah. <laughs> Ice cold freshies, baby. Talking about it right now, man. Uh, Miller Light on tap with illegal elbow right now. Dan. It's ice cold, Dan. What are you talking? Oh, what are you yeah. thinking, man? Oh man, I got the t- I got the tall boys too, man. The sixteen ounce tall boy uh, cans here. Going you put down. them babies in the freezer, like you said on the oh, last yeah, show. Oh yeah, man. I, that's the ice, only way. Ice cold, man. That's what I'm talking about. But um, anyway, getting back to it, man. Shit. Jimmy Manuel, Anthony Johnson. The thing I think that's kind of funny about this fight, it makes me ask a little bit of questions. I'm like, kind of, ah, well, what's going on here, man? I don't know. I don't understand it. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about him right here. Jimmy Mandua gets knocked out by Alexander Gustafson. Anthony Johnson, in the very next fight, knocks out uh, Alexander Gustafson. So why... Uh, Jimmy Jimmy Manuel comes back and knocks out, or no, excuse me, decisions a Jan Blakovic, which Jan Blakovic fucking made very short work of Alir Latifi. We saw that fight, and I was like, holy shit, I, I love Jan Blakovic. I want to see more of what he's doing. I was fucking so excited for it. But then, on the other hand, Anthony Johnson knocked out 
Alexander Gustafsson, and but the, but at the same time lost to a uh, the champion now the, the only only fighter in question I guess when it comes to this this fight because this fight makes no sense to me is what I'm trying to say, but the only fighter that's not in question when it comes to this fight is DC, which is the inter, interim champion or whatever for UFC's light heavyweight. But I mean, really, when you think about it, Anthony Johnson is a whole mile ahead of Jimmy Manuela. So, because Jimmy Manuel knocked out Jan Blakovich for his last fight, and then Anthony Johnson for his last fight lost to the champ, which is DC. But you talk about their their most recent fights. You're talking Alexander Gustafsson, which Anthony Johnson knocked him the fuck out, and Jimmy Manua got knocked the fuck out by Alexander Gustafsson. So this fight really doesn't make any sense to me. It's like a they're throwing Johnson a bone here. Well, they are because he's he's number one contender versus an unranked guy. Uh, Jimmy Manuel is fifteen to one and he's unranked. Or oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, my bad. He's ranked number seven. Duh. I was gonna say he had to have been ranked, man. No, he's I mean, ranked you know, number but, seven. I'm yeah, but I can't. Somebody else. Yeah, but no, I can't. I can't take anything away from what you said because it's like I didn't know just yet where he was ranked. So. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, a number seven going against a number one. It's been done before, right. but it doesn't make any sense, like you're saying. Yeah. I mean, Anthony Johnson should smash this guy. But being the Jimmy Manua, Manua, excuse me. I, I always jack this guy's name up. Manua, Manua, poop, whatever, man. I, Sorry. That's not what I'm trying to say, but I, I always screw this guy's name up. I love this guy. I love watching him fight. He always brings a fucking tough game, man, and it's badass. And he's only lost once. I love seeing it. So that's why I'm, I'm first in line to see him come back from a, um, like I said, man, he, he beat a Jan Blakovich. Jan Blakovich is a fucking badass dude, you know, um, coming out of, uh, uh, I believe it's KSW. So it comes out of KSW. I, like I said, I believe, I, I don't hold me to it, but, uh, you know, loses to Al- Alexander Gustafson. Gets his bearings, beats a, a Jan Blakovich, and then now he's got a shot at Anthony Johnson. I think it's it's a great thing for a Jimmy Jimmy Manuel, but Anthony Johnson right now, I don't see him losing to a, a, a Manuel right now, because this guy's got all the arsenal right now to all the arsenal and all the you know I don't know who he's training with, man. I really don't. You know, let's take a look at Anthony Johnson here for real. Real quick second here, man. I want to see who he's actually training with. Black Zillions. Jocko Hybrid Training Center. I mean, come on. Do you need any more of a, a set of directions when it comes to some top training camps? It's pretty sick right there. You know, Black Zillions have come a long way. We've seen Black Zillions, like, back 2011, 2012, losing, you know, three, four, fight, four, three, four fights per card. You know, I'm I'm serious, man. I'm totally serious. We saw that, and it was they've done leaps and bounds since then. These guys have solidified their game. They got they got badasses in their in their camp. So he's training with all kinds of, of top notch guys. We could probably name a shitload of them, but this is going to be kind of like the uh, Ross Pearson and uh, Paul Felder fight. It's going to be like a snot bubble fight right here. Right. I'd say a little more one-sided when it comes to a yeah. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. no, no. I have Johnson. I have Johnson actually knocking a Jimmy Manuel out in the first round, but that's me. I just think his his striking is that much superior. Yeah, it, I, I I believe it is too. It, yeah. It's it's not going to be if it's going to be a matter of when uh, for me. So if well, you I remember had, uh, my paycheck. And I was going to bet it. I would run down and bet it on fucking Anthony Johnson in the first round. So. Well, you remember uh, Lear Latifi, right? Oh, yeah. That guy looked pretty promising. Huh. You know, and then uh, he was supposed to, he was, he was coming in to fight uh, Gagar Masasi. Mm-hmm. Masasi just did whatever he had to do. Of course, coming in against Masasi, what's the guy he's supposed to do? You know what I mean? He just got his ass handed to him. But we've seen him come in after that and just look 
like a killer. Ice like wrestling, a, yeah, all that. Yeah, shit. just throwing dudes around like a uh, shit. What's that guy's name? Calvin Gastelum. Yeah, Gastelum or a Romero or something like yep. that. Just, just making short work of dudes, throwing them around, looking, looking sick with it. And then a, uh, and he gets, he gets wrecked by Jan Blakovich. And then sure enough, man, Manuel comes in, knocks out a Blakovich. I'm like, holy shit, man! I was so excited for you, Blakovich. It's just me, people. Probably it's just yeah, me. Did he knock him out, or was it a decision? Oh, uh, you know what? You, you know, man, let's take a look at that because you might be right about that. It might have been a decision, but I think he did finish him. But uh, no, it was a decision. I'm sorry, man. My bad. But Jan Blakovich is don't don't sleep on this guy. You know, and it just goes to show you right there. Manua, you know, couldn't put this guy out, couldn't finish him. <clears throat> Blakovich, uh, let's take a quick look here. 18 and 4. He's facing Corey Anderson at, at beat, go, um, excuse me, uh, Lear Latifi. Gorn Relic, ex UFC fighter at KSW, like I told you. Beat Houston Alexander, KSW. Uh, Mario Miranda, KSW. Mario Miranda's ex UFC fighter, and then he comes in here and he just smashes literally Tifi. I mean, in round one, smashes him. So uh, that's why I was so excited to see the guy. But then uh, Manua, excuse me, Manua, beats him. To me, it's an exciting fight to see Manua get in here against Anthony Johnson. But I just don't see him ready for Anthony Johnson. But what, what's he doing with with his training? You know, I mean, what what kind of training camp do we got for uh, Manua? Manua, 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 Manure, whatever it is. But uh, Kettle's Gym, Nova Forza, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So uh, you know, what's he doing at this point? Thirteen knockouts, one submission, one decision for his wins. So this guy's definitely got j- jackhammers in his hands. So I think that's what they're looking at. Two top strikers at their game. But you know what? I just don't see Manua really posing a huge striker game against a uh, Anthony Johnson, man. I just don't see it. But I, I, you know what, dude? If, if Manua, I mean, imagine that upset, Dan. Really, imagine yeah. that upset. How fucking sick would that be? It'd be a stunner. It would be a stunner. That in a fight like that's in a fight like this, it's it could happen. You know, it's a fucking knockout fight. It's a knockout. It's the same. It's the same thing with the Ross Pearson and uh, Paul Feldman. These guys are just going to be throwing hands, throwing kicks, and maybe not so much in this fight, but they're going to be throwing. I I I'm picking Anthony Johnson because I like his prowess. Uh, when you're talking about a uh, Jimmy Manua. He's 35 years old. He's four years the elder. I'm kind of almost, kind of, kind of hoping that he can make a, he can shake it up a little bit, shake it up, make it a nasty fight, and and find the chin of a of a Johnson. Even though I'm a huge fan of Johnson, man, I love Anthony Johnson, man, big time. But if Man uh, Manua can get in here, you know, in his, you know, he's only got one loss. If he can get in here and find it, find some chin action. With the, with this shitload of knockouts he's got, holy gravy! You know what I mean? That's that's the whole meaning of this fight. Two knockout strikers going at it. It makes perfect friggin' sense, man. So, but obviously I'm picking Anthony Johnson. But yeah, yeah. I like I like Manua, man. I like it, dude. I think I think if he can do it, I'm I'm happy, man. Going from uh, two frickin' brawl em ups to maybe another brawl em up. I'd like to see, you know, Frank Mir coming in against Andre Olofsky. Andre Olofsky sitting at a 24 and 10. Frank Mir sitting at an 18 and 9. Frank Mir with a newly found striking game, bro, against the Andre Olofsky, who has always been known as a striker. Frank Mir, yeah, he did great. You know, he did great against, uh, against the Todd Duffy. He did great against the Bigfoot. We've seen his boxing come into this. But fucking Frank Mir took a couple punches in this fucking uh, Todd Duffy fight. Don't, let, let's not forget that. 
as yeah. did Andre Arlovsky almost getting knocked the fuck out in the Travis Brown. So we got some similarities coming in to this fight. We also, like I said, these guy, and Andre Arlovsky, always known, already known for his fighter, for his uh, punching power. Yeah. And a Frank Mir who has a newly found boxing part to his game. Yeah, new coaches this, too, man. New yes, coaches. New coaches. Big uh, weight advantage too, man. Put something into his head saying, hey, man, yeah, you've done all this, but you need to fucking evolve. Frank Mir's done that. But the question is, who's going to be better? Who's going to be better? Is Frank Mir going to come in here? After, like he did his last two fights and box with an Andre Arlovsky, like a Travis Brown tried and failed, or is he gonna maybe faint a little bit and 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 start out boxing and then try to take an Arlovsky down and use some of his well-known jujitsu? This is a big question here, man, because right now <coughs> I'm I'm it, it, we're almost closing in. Like I said, people, we're going to do a full a full video on this come Friday and we'll have it out. But this little, this little uh, preview here, this is, this is a hard one for me to fucking pick, bro. Oh, it's fucking sick, dude. It's sick because I think with all the, all the shit in the side right now on the side of Andre Olavsky, just facing competition that he's fought, I would almost give this guy just the momentum of the fight. It's like, dude, you've looked so good. You know, would any of would anybody have ever thought that Frank Mir could go in there and give? You know, I'm talking like maybe six months ago. Would Frank Mir have ever have put on a show against a Travis Brown? I don't think so, man. I I would have never picked Frank Mir beating a Travis Travis Brown. Nowadays, yeah, I probably would give him that shot. After Andre Andre Olavsky desecrated his ass. You know, I mean, just I'm just saying, you know, not saying that uh, Andre lost or uh, excuse me, uh, not saying that Travis Travis Brown's done. I'm not saying that, but I'm just like, we're talking about different matchups here because Frank Mears matched up against Andre Olavsky, UFC 191. This is sick because you're talking. I think it's a little bit early for Frank Mears, just my opinion, because Andre Olavsky has had a long road to get to this point. Andre Arlovsky has had a long road to get to this point, including a, a losing end of a Fedor Emelianenko fight. Yeah. You know, he's faced all kinds of different competition that Frank Mir's never seen. You know what I mean? You know, which there are some of the fights that he has seen, which talking about a, uh, well, he, he, well, he beat a Travis Brown, Frank Mir's never seen. He uh, beat uh, Antonio Silva, which Frank Mir's beat him as well. He's beat Brendan Schaub. Andreas uh, Kronotakis, you know, whatever, man. Fucking, that was fight night, maybe we'll, fight night in Babylon, whatever the hell that was. But, um, <laughs> but that was like that was like two not that was like two months outside of each other from a uh, World Series of Fighting against a uh, Mike Kyle win for Andre Olavsky. I mean, Andre Olavsky's been on a win streak, which is sick. His only loss really in the last two and a half years against. None other than Anthony Johnson in World Series of Fighting 2, which was, like I said, man, two and a half years ago. So, Andre Arlovsky, man, has really risen above the occasion, risen above, <clears throat> and just really made a new name for himself. His, I think his biggest thing that he's ever done, excuse me, man, holy burps, man, sorry about that, people, but... His biggest thing he's ever done is just just completely demolishing a, a Travis Brown. Because when he did it to a uh, Bigfoot Silva, I was like, ah, kind of deservedly so, kind of whatever. Oh, he beat a Brendan Schaub. Uh, yeah, Brendan Schaub's really kind of, eh. It's kind Brendan Schaub. Yeah, he's kind of, he's like kind of Schaub. You know, he's kind of like a, not really the real pro, he's kind of a Schaub. You know, but but I, I, that's totally clowning. Between a Brandon Vera and a Schaub. So. <laughs> right, right. But uh, when it came to a Travis Travis Brown point, Andre Olavsky beat the living hell out of that guy. I mean, you beat the living shit out of that guy. But at the same time, when you look at the on the other side, I'm gonna make a little bit of a little bit of weight in the Arlovsky area because 
he's faced, in my opinion, tougher competition. But we're, you know, for fart's sake, man. I got all kinds of crap ads going on over here. Okay, I paused it. Sorry about that, people. But, uh, you know, if you look at it on the other side, man, Frank Mir knocking out an up-and-comer guy that a lot of people thought, hey, man, this guy might wreck Frank Mir's ass. You know, knocked him out round one. Usually where where Todd Duffy would find his opponent on the ground, you know, on the ass end of a loss. Before that, you got an Antonio Silva. Before that, you got a four-fight losing streak. So that's why I think this fight is almost a weird kind of a matchup, in my opinion. Because they're really putting a lot of eggs in the Frank Mir basket. But it's like, you know, we've seen... A complete 180 when it comes to Frank Mir, because we've seen Frank Mir come out and say, you know, well, this guy doesn't do what I do and doesn't do this and doesn't do that and and almost basically makes himself the winner of each fight he comes out in. We've seen it with his four losses. We've seen it with every single one of them. Josh Barnett thinks that he's so great. He's going to do that. And Josh Barnett came back with this guy's a fucking dickhead, you know, and then Josh Barnett beat him. You know what I mean? So, you know what I'm saying? I mean. So that's where it's kind of like, to me, it's like, uh, I think it's a little bit stacked in the Andre Arlovsky area. But, but, Frank Mears faced tougher competition, man. It, it's, it's just true. It really is just true. By his own volition, man. That's what he wanted. He wanted to face all this tough competition. So, you know, when it comes to this, it's like, you know, he's two, two wins out of his last six. His last six, he's two and four. Looks fucking horrible. But at the same time, Frank Mears completely done a 180 with his with his uh with his training training uh training techniques. So Well we'll have to see, man. It's fucking it's a hard one for me right now. I'd have to say um uh, I gotta go with me myself, I gotta go with Arlovsky. Yeah. Looking at what Arlovsky did with the Travis Brown, you know, which yeah. you know what? We we've both said it ourselves and you just said it recently, man. Travis Brown got exposed. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no way we could prove that Frank Mir can't expose a Travis Brown as well. So, to me, it's like, you know what? That's what makes this fight so interesting. You know, Andre Olofsky fucking smashed a Travis Brown. There's no really real real, real way of saying, well, well why, why, why can't Frank do it? Frank's got a I whole think, different yeah. game going here. You know what I mean? I think, so, I think to me, I say, I'm going to pick Frank Mir because I think Frank Mir is going to mix up early the boxing, and I think he's going to take down up uh, uh, in Orlowski. That's just, a great point. It's just because I just think if you got an Orlowski who's just – you already know what an Orlowski is going to do. You know, yep. it, it, Frank Mir, if Orlowski is looking at a Frank Mir on his spectrum, he's going to say, okay, Frank Mir has turned into a, a boxing guy. He's – He's just a boxing guy now, okay? He's learned boxing. You know, I'm not going right. to have to. He, he might not well, even think about point, doing yeah. any real takedowns, you know, maybe some takedown. He's not going to be takedown uh, heavy training camp, okay? Uh, he's going to work on his boxing. Okay, me and Frank are going to box. I'm going to show Frank what I can do. Frank, on the other hand, might be being like, okay, Arlovsky's watched my last two fights. I'm boxing. You know he's going to come out and try to knock my head off. It's you know, a great and if, point, and if dude. Mike, and if he's a smart guy, he's going to say, "Well, he's had a lot more fights, and he's or not a lot more. He's had some more fights than I have, and he's knocked motherfuckers out, and that's what he does. Well, maybe if I go in and take his ass down and use my superior jujitsu, I can win this fight and jump up the ladder and smart and fight smart." Yeah. And you know what, right now, man, the way Frank Lear looks, it's like, dude, you have no choice but to fight smart right now. Yeah. You know, and, and he, and I'm, dude, we've seen Frank Lear ground game. With he's only the, have so, he's only has so many fights left in him, bro. Right. You're talking about two guys that are both 36 years old. So this is a gigantic match. You know, Andre Olofsky is, you know, Sick ass takedown defense. And you're talking about Frank Beer, that has got a sick ass green ground game. So if Frank Beer really wants to figure this fight out, it's like, 
okay, get me all the shit that I need, all the tools that I need for my stand-up game. And if shit hits the fan, let me revert back to my ground game. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, that's to me, it's like Frank Mir actually is the more faceted fighter, probably. Oh, he is. I think he's got he's got if he if he's smart at it, he's the better fighter for this. Like you said, more multifaceted fighter. But it's just that 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 shit that Arlovsky is like. And not only that, we have to worry about fucking Frank's ego. You know, no, exactly. Like, yeah. You that know, gets we're in the way of his that. game plan, smart, smart there's, thinking. Yeah. There's yeah. two things, man. It's like Andre olovsky has got so much momentum behind him right now. He, he, people have talked about him in the title sense, in the title picture, you know, people are like, dude, I want to see Andre Olovsky fucking fight Verdue. People have been saying that across the board forever, but it's like the other side of it. It's like, well, wait a minute, man. Frank Mears looking fucking pretty badass right now. But at the same time, I was like, well, Frank Mir, uh, what, you know, like you're saying, what, uh, are we seeing a Frank Mir that's going to, okay, I got two fucking huge wins here, two, two knockout wins, so am I going to call myself the fucking winner no matter what happens? Because we've seen that, you know, for what, the last five years? Yeah. Or is it going to be a Frank Mir that I'm sitting at number 10 right now, and if I want to climb the ladder in the fucking the, the top 10 division, I need to fucking play this one smart. I need to get a victory and get the fuck out of here. If you're going to go in for a fucking blood battle, because if you go in, if you, Frank Beer, really, if he thinks about it, if he's going to go in with Arlovsky and he's going to sit there and stand and bang with Arlovsky, he could do this too. You know, he could fucking do the old grind him up against the fucking cage shit like we've seen a Frank Beer do and wear him down and we could be doing a cardio match. Or he could be, like we said, take him to the ground but the bottom line is Frank Mir, if he wants to fucking catapult himself by beating a, a number four ranked guy or whatever uh, Arlovsky is right now in the heavyweight division, you are going to have to fight smart. Because I don't see if he's going to sit there and, and stand in the middle of the fucking cage yeah. with an Arlovsky, it's not a good idea. I don't care if he's got newly found boxing skill. It's it's only gonna take one hit, dude. And yeah. you're, you're yeah. everything you've worked for in these past two fights is gonna mean nothing, and you're gonna be shaking your head and and beating yourself up about it. You gotta fucking come into this bitch smart. Right. Think about it this way, man. Todd Duffy versus Andre Olovsky, a fucking smashing contest, and Andre Olovsky is gonna be fucking. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, man. No, hands down, going to come out on top of that one. Yeah. So that, that that tells me, you know, well, you can call it math, whatever you can call it, whatever you want to call it, people. But at the same time, it's like, that's your set of directions for a Frank Mir. Mm-hmm. You need to play the fight smart. If, you, if you're if you starting to get outstruck on the, on the feet, you know, in, in a round one, and you got a chance to go into round two, take this yeah. fucking guy, like Dan's saying, put him against the cage. Take him down if you can, you know, and if not because, work some Muay Thai knees that, you know, yeah, you know, which is not not devastating. Frank's not like a Muay Thai, Muay Thai specialist. No, but, but I mean, he's good at it, but he's it's not in a, his uh, bag you know. of tricks. Like we're saying the repertoire, you know, yeah, it's in his bag of tricks. He has it. He knows it. And it's he's. <clears throat> <clears throat> Arlovsky with them fucking backhands, them forward, yeah. you know, forward strikes and backhands that he did with our with uh, Travis Brown. He made Travis Brown look like a bitch. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, man. Oh, now, Ronda can Ronda can say all she wants about Floyd Mayweather, but Travis uh, Brown, in my opinion, uh, has a has a has an innate flaw in his game, and I think it's his <laughs> it's his fucking it's his defense stand up. Um, Spread him out with his legs, try to use his length. Which, when he go for anybody like, like we said, fucking our Jerry Lasky, if you're gonna if you're gonna use the wide stance and you're gonna try to use length against me, I'm going to close the gap. Yeah. Kind of like Mike Tyson used to do against fucking any large yeah. opponent. Mike Tyson used to go against. He just said, "We're I'm not gonna stay back here and let you jab the fuck out of me." I'm going. The only person that was that worked at jabbing Mike Tyson and keeping him at bay was Lennox Lewis. 
Because Lennox Lewis, in my opinion, has had one of the greatest fucking jabs in the history of fucking boxing. Oh, jeez, man, like, yeah. I like, remember watching that fight, too. And yeah. It was fucking devastating. It's like, yeah, this guy fucking beat the ever-loving shit out of him with the he fucking did. jab all night long. He did. He did, bro. And, and... It's Andre just... Lowski's multifaceted when it comes to yeah. striking alone. So it's like, well, that's that's where it really comes into place, where it's like, well, Frank Mir, how good is your striking now? Because this guy has seen top strikers since the last Frank Mir, years. how about this, Frank Mir? You know Ar- Arlovsky. You know what he just did to, he did it against, he did it against Fedor, and Fedor capitalized it. Fedor didn't do a takedown or anything, but after Arlovsky overcommitted and just bull rushed, Fucking Fedor was there and beat him to the fucking punch and knocked him out midair. I'm yeah. not saying do this, yeah. but when Andrei Lofsky goes off for his big-ass punches and overcommits, that's when I think Frank Mir would be best at taking him down. You know, just that's just me. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point, man. I, I think Andrei Lofsky is a lot smarter than that. Yep. You know, yeah, he's, like, he's grown, like sure. That's like, that's like five years ago. But, I mean, it, it's still relevant. It yep. still makes sense. It's like, well, you can't just overcommit when, you know, <clears throat> expect yourself to be, you know, this all-telling, all, all telling, all-being, you know, look guy. The, that, you know, yeah, you got to fucking stay smart about shit. Look at the Travis Brown fight against Andre Arlovsky where Travis Brown knocked down fucking Andre Arlovsky and he was bent down. And tra- Travis Arlovsky went for a follow-up punch and totally fucking airmailed it. And, yeah, like, air, he airmailed like seven of them. Yeah. <laughs> and Andre Olavsky was like so on top of it. He's like, yeah. oh, I'm out of this. I'm done with this. I, yeah. I'm back on my feet. And Travis Brown's still on the ground. And yeah. that's why I was like, I this is I. To me, it was like, this is we do. We were there. We were at Cousins' house. Yeah. We were fucking screaming at the top of our lungs. We're like, oh, I'm like, I can't believe this. <laughs> yeah, I, I was I was beside myself. I'm like, Andre Olavsky is fucking back. Yeah. I don't give a shit if Andre Olavsky ever gets a title shot. We were fucking hyped up, man. It was to like, me, it's another high, another highlight fucking heavyweight fight at Cousins' house. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it was to me. It was like Andre Olavsky just proved to me that I don't give a shit how good Travis Brown ever does. This dude just collected his ass, knocked his ass the fuck out, and Andre Olavsky's back in the game. That's what it just. That's what it said to me because it's like that was huge, man. And it tra- at the end of the fight, too, Travis, because they're training partners. Travis Brown was like, dude, don't ever say sorry, man. Don't ever fucking say sorry. You know, because yeah. Andre Arlovsky was like, I'm sorry, man, because they're training partners. They, they trained together for a long time. And um, Travis Brown was like, you know, or Andre Arlovsky was like, uh, hey, I- I'm sorry, man, because he goes in there. He does his fucking job. He yeah. did what he had to do. The Travis Brown was like, don't ever say sorry. Don't ever fucking say sorry, man. It's, it's, you know, you do, you, it's fine. You do what you had to do, you know, and, and sure enough, man. Oh, I'm so excited to see Andre Arlovsky fight again, but that's why I'm so sour about this fight, dude, because I love Frank Mir and especially his newfound shit, man. That's why I'm so, so sour with this fight. Just me though, man. I mean, <laughs> but I, I, I love it though. I think it's an awesome fight, man. It's a uh, yeah. kick ass heavyweight fight. We're looking for we're looking forward to it. And people, um, the John Dotson uh, Demet the champ uh, meets the Demetrius Johnson uh, fight, two, baby. Yeah, we're That's going to run three. that down in depth on our video on Friday. But is it two we, or three? Oh shit! Let me see. You know, I don't even know, man. Really, when you think about it, shit. I'm sorry, man. I fuck oh, shit all up. I don't know what I'm looking <laughs> for right now. Oh no! Yeah, wait, wait, wait. One, one second here. I'll, I'll figure it out. Dodson. Uh... Yeah. Jo- oh, I'm sorry. Johnson versus Dodson two. Sorry about yep. that, people. I thought maybe it might have been part three here. I'm not sure, but no. It, not... It's come to a head. We're gonna run it down a little more intricate on the video, but just to say, you know, John Dodson's earned the rematch. He really has. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a lightning fast. A lot of you know. You know, it's probably not the most popular division, but I'll tell you one thing. These two guys, it's going to be the most quickest fight you've seen in a long fucking time. Yeah. And a lot of these combos you, that you, 
that they do in real time, you're not going to be able to appreciate them until you watch them in fucking slow mo, as you do every time with either one of these guys. You they show replays of these guys, and it's just fucking amazing, man. These guys are fucking awesome. But uh, Ninja versus Ninja. Yep. Big time. <laughs> That's it, man. That's but, it. Uh, we're gonna get out of here, people. Thanks a lot. You know, um, thanks hey, a lot little... for the new page, man. Fucking liking the new page. Yeah, all the likes, man. We really, really appreciate it, man. But before we duck out of here, man, I don't want to – to people out there, man, I just want to tell everybody, man, really give yourself a little bit of space when you hear all this crap on the news. You know, like we talked about earlier on the show, take, take, a, take a look at both sides because you're going to hear all kinds of crap about, you know, oh, the TV just told me this, TV just told me that. You know what? Stop it, man, really. Because I'll tell you what. Every time you hear something from somebody, you don't hear the other side. So when the TV tells you something, you're not hearing the other side. So it's all bullshit. You're hearing a lot of crap from the TV. Just because the TV told you something doesn't mean you're hearing the other side. So with with that in mind, what I want to say is I don't care what color you are. I don't care what background. I don't care what you believe in. I don't give a shit what any of, the, any of that is. Love your brothers and sisters, man. Let's stop all this racism crap. Let's stop all this bullshit, man. Yeah. Let's all love let's your brothers. Come brother. together. Yep. Yeah. Let's come together. Love your brothers and sisters, man. It's time for this shit to come to a close. So, yeah. without further ado, brother. Steadfast. And a God beer. All right, people, thanks for tuning in, man. It was a blast. Don't forget to check us out, uh, MMA Aftermath on Facebook, MMA Aftermath on Twitter, also Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And uh, head on over to IllegalElbow.com. Check out the top 20 heavyweight list and the heavyweight forecast and all the extras and new stuff that Brian's been putting on. That's IllegalElbow.com, people.